Located on the eastern part of the country, Omaheke region is home to about 3.4% of Namibia's population. The region is arid to semi-arid with vast open savannas and has an average rainfall of about 99 to 402 millimeters on the south and 179 to 587 millimeters on the central area. The significant change in the rainfall pattern in the last four to five years led to severe drought being experienced currently. This is one major drought that the country has not experienced in decades. Omaheke, hosting the most populous of cattle farmers and being the biggest meat producers in the country, is not spared by this natural phenomenon. The regional capital Hobabis gets its water supply from two dams, which dried up a few years ago. Let's hear how they are dealing with the predicament. I spoke last week to the ministry and they tell me they test about three months ago the water levels and mm -hmm. the underground water level is still so looking good. very good. Okay. Nobody knows really, but it can change in six months or a year or in yeah. two years. Uh, yeah. yeah, depends on the rainfall and how much the aquifer get yeah. recharged. Um, but we, sh but we should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is at least. Yeah, um, I can give you the town usage is about eighty six thousand, eighty five thousand average. Okay. A month. Yeah. Um, the north is king which is 14 bottles, yeah. they can produce, like I said, it's a little bit from south, I can give you exactly, but it's about 84,000 or 600, I okay. think, can get from the northeast scheme. Mm. Uh, then the other two schemes, I cannot recall now exactly, but one is 14,000 and the other one 7,000 or something like that. So we have a little bit mm. of playing. Mm. And then also, if we are really in trouble, we have some bottles at, at Grunenthal. Okay. Near that flight. Yeah, Guru which, which we also can transport the water here. Okay, so it can be linked. It's a, a link yeah, it's system. a link system. It's okay. so very connected. It's very connected. Um, mm -hmm. well, maybe I must draw to you, then you can understand mm -hmm. better why is it why is so secure. So okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a pipeline to Tala for you. Okay. Yeah. So if Tala water, we fill up Tala with. Ochivero. So if Ochivero gets inflow, we can transfer the water to um, to Tola. Okay. Um, from Tola it goes to the plant, and from the plant it goes up to the reservoir. Reservoir. This is our big reservoir, and then it goes down to Tola. Um, then we have the northeast bottles. There are 14 bottles. Uh, the black nozzle bottles or the Hubabas bottles, there are eight, and the self station bottles, and they all go into there. Okay, so that's and that is in cubic meters? That is in cubic meters. That is what we are allowed to take out of the bottles for Hubabas. Per month. Per month. Per month. And how much does Kobabas use per month? On, on average, 85,000. Okay. The highest ever consumption we have was 100 and something in the tenth. I can't, 12 or 16, I cannot remember. Yeah. But that was the highest ever, and that was once in, in the past three years. With that relieving news, the burden is not lifted yet as farmers flock to town for livestock grazing. This site municipal camps that we're renting out, um, it seems when there's drought in the other areas, then they are bringing, or family or whoever mm. that are renting on this site are bringing the animals. And it seems naturally, or they, they would bring, or these animals will come and drink water at the dam. But it's not something that the municipality would want. We had about five accidents during the season or festive season period and two of that vehicles came and put claims in at the municipality but it is a challenge these animals but we try to let our people understand 
that Hubabas is not a place for your animals. It is for human habitation. Yes, we're trying now to make them lesser because we also see now, you know, the more animals roam in this area, your defecation and these things, and water coming, it will definitely affect the water quality. I came here to Hobabes Municipal Land because of drought. I did not get permission from anyone when I came into this place. Look at my complexion. I am usually a very, very, very smart looking man. But look at how I am burnt by the sun. And this led me to sleep in tent, an experience I had never had before. I found this open municipal land where there was left over grass. I did not ask any permission. There is one, maybe you, you took pictures already. See how it looks. This is where we brought those skinny livestock here. When I came here, we had a tight meetings with Frita and the CEO, who in the end said we could stay here and in the meantime, just for a while. They warned us even that we should not let any fourth person in. If we let for the fourth person in this place, they will chase us, all of us, while on this agreement. Soon the council reported us. To this day, we are waiting to hear from them. We are waiting to hear our fate from here where we are going, as we don't know up to now. But I keep saying, if we are told to vacate, I will give the cattle to the council and go back home. Because this far, I don't know where else to go or where to take the cattle to. So I am here, I am waiting from the council to tell me, go to ASAP, go to Usakos, or wherever, from the 68. I am left with five cows, even those two, cattle that I'm, those two cows that I'm having, that, that is lying there, I might lose them. I don't even sleep. I am stressed, and I am finished. Hence my being here at the five calves that we are daily lifting from the ground. We also wish that the government could help us with the already bought farms, such as the one close to Homewood and others, that we are not occupied yet. After drought, we go back to where we come from. This is what we want. The municipality could give us an option of paying a certain fee per head of cattle to continue grazing in plots which are rich in grass. Although the government has put in place measures to mitigate the drought situation, farmers are still not satisfied. The process of government subsidizing farmers based on, on the number of bags of fodder bought is lengthy and cumbersome. So far about six months will be waiting for the government promised, aid, but in the meantime the kidney is not waiting, they are dying. <laughs> Shuara ndo makuto murongo, oti pe first kelen de nai, momo nuko mome kuto mo isakero fifty aranda. Nambaran jira era shimu nai nyangu mbe u u onde sentra nai jimo na. O makuto ndo kuchamara ndari mo role kara ero ra ra ro kuchamie kuti ndo ngombe nu. Shuwa gumura ya kuchamie nami kona ukali fiziera ukamburo nanyo, mena kuchamie makuto murongo ngai koya ni nisi chivari rocho. E andiri pe tatu kuchamie batiro teko horo men deiri ondeu, inde nara isani wa kuchamie kuna batiro. Posi ya kuti ndari dema temu hama kona mbwa. Kapena mwanda how do you hear horror mendi rumwe yeku hiruramba ekutu andai role ka poshi kwe. Omonja tu zetu bina ndai shwata mu ikandi na mu ikandi na bini. Ogutu puka pepa kumbwa kutoka udi shuna kafiri. The farmers are, however, faced with challenges. Unyo oyo chimu muna onyamana. Oku shuruwe zendri karuwe z. This is not a cattle rearing area. Because there are desperate, hungry people 
will kill them without any fear. We did not come here as a joke, not to provoke the municipal council. We were, we were forced here by the heavy burden on our shoulders, and that is our livestock. The government, however, has been advising farmers to destock to enable a good and effective livestock management. Oh, 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 Biriro bitit, orongo bend the ram bund. Meto ore karandisa piko fifteen ara na mongo mega di njipa karandisa. Mora ndi sangundo umunde ambo. Eteka turo kumbura. Umbure iri pini mega karandisa orongo benda nuna deka pi. Eteka nombora njie turo kanje njia nuni orongo be. Nati eko karamba. Eteka tiaro kumuna umbura. Ono uzi umburi pono ho. Obo shimo angu kienda koshombinde. Ukabati koshombinde. Oshimbingwe na vitoto na na maruru na yino hantu andumbo ba yango be kiri paperango o rumbumbu kawe tati erike wa mungwa the whole country iri muri umga sanango kuchwa andumbo kama be tati erike na kama be tati erike dongo mbomo longo kwa mino longo benda no kuingui na hambo mbali kuingui na opu opu a piend o dongo benda nda hota mango ma zindung ito remi tuare poshunda shwa karamba mbika randi se zinji peye mwa shwa ni minga hino bino ana shomo longo hino bino longo bomo longo vitan. Nakuzo kuzo longo benda mirongo vita nunda moana show mirongo madhe nene madhe kutiza. Tuno kapush machine kuke unduro kumiango kugeta ngono kujanga tu pakira mo petora na atulando petora kujenga mani koko kama hina kuke tiba sisi ro miango duta miya katia na koko kuringu nuko yangu nuno oshi he ya uli. Ogusha busha. Atulando pasengenji. Ogusha mo pasengenji. Atungura no kama hina. O onjombo. I'm for 14 years on this part of uh, farm and it's the very first time that I need to feed the animals. It's the very best that I can do. Well, it affected everybody, as I think, but uh, I'm coping in the moment. I could get grass earlier this year and uh, I'm, I'm surviving in the moment. Don't know what will happen to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So this is all I have. Mm -hmm. It's only a small piece of land and it's just a playground for me. Since the beginning of the year or maybe probably towards the end of last year when we realized that we are really into the drought situation, how many did you sell off your cattle to be able to help the others survive? Um, uh, it's up to 12 now. Up to 12 now. And uh, there's some more in, in the kraal over there. Mm -hmm that I'm feeding, so it will go up to 15 or 16. Okay. Did you lose any? Dead? No. No? No. Okay. No, we had some rain and it wasn't enough, but uh, we could get this far. Mm -hmm. So it's not that bad until now. Then we'll see what happens at the end of the year. You have a borehole here in the yeah. area? Yeah, I have two of them. Uh, one over there. And the one over there, that one I'm not using. It's just for a standby. Okay. And then that one I'm using. Well, I can go for three months and uh, I hope it will rain early this year. If it doesn't rain, do you have any measures in place? Uh, well, yeah. As you can see, there's grass uh -huh. and then I'll just feed the animals and get, lo uh, get them solace. Yes, uh, you know, it, it, it's very helpful when, when looking to the conditions of the animals at this time of the year and the still the months or the that the season that they have to go through maybe if we will be expecting rain to come so we looking at the condition now it, it you will ask yourself how are they going to look after three months or the time to come because fitting them we are trying to feed them but the, it's, it's it's expensive now yeah, we are trying by all means. And 
in the field, when they go in the field, there's no enough food for them. Mm. Yeah. When they come back home, we try to feed, but not to satisfy. Yeah. We have been doing farm work. We have been here the last 20 years, since 1999. And what we are dealing with, we are doing farming for cattle farming, goat farming, and sheep farming. And we have been experiencing drought before, but it, comparing to the one that we're having now, it's, it's totally different. As we are talking from the background of the rain around the area, we used to receive like a minimum of the rain about 400, 450. And comparing to last year, it was difficult even our recording, it was lower than 100 milliliters. And as we, as we are talking now about the drought that we're having, it's sounding more, it's sounding more worse. It's the first time to experience such a drought and and especially we try hard because it's the first time to experience such a drought it's the first time to experience such a low rainfall that we haven't received for now the situation it's still handling we we haven't it haven't been that more worse we're not feeding that as much as you comparing to other areas you Aminus and other area of namibia mm -hmm. but for now uh, it's a bit better than comparing to other area, okay. but as you guys also checking on the area, it's it's clear, it's it's, it's clear, it's like comparing to desert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't lost any cattle so far, and actually, just unlucky that the cattle they haven't arrived is too early. You could also uh, see them physically, but as you are seeing from the goat and the sheep, it's for now it's okay, mm -hmm. but I'm not saying it will be okay for. Maybe it might be 10. Once it's 10, it will, if it will be worse. But we hope that the rain will gonna come. And the thing that has been protecting us is, is the number of animals that we keep. That's the only thing. But actually on the neighbors, on the neighbors' farms, they are worse. Because it's sounding like they're overstocking and whatever it is. That's the only thing that will help the farmers is to control your numbers, is to check the environment where you are and you check how you're going to feed you for how long it is. What I am doing as a farm to, to, to prevent or to get or uh, to secure the the day-to-day -day life, also we involve in a project like Chakwa, where we do debushings, actually debushing helping also the grass to like, create a space for the grass and actually when you take when you are talking about the prospect of namibian farms mostly us who own farmers even private lands we we are using the land maybe 10 percent of the land but we don't use the other part of the lands we are using one system which is having a cattle selling a calf getting the money finishing there but we are not doing the bushing also making like charcoal or wood selling to the market or milk some extra things we don't do it as a farmers it's it also create an extra a, extra income well in the situation where the price of the cattle actually price market of the cattle is stood down to do to the conditions of the animals and whatever it is and actually around here in Wesley we have the factory where we we sell our charcoal this is our charcoal mm -hmm. this is final it's just to be packed in the bags, just to the market, it's ready. Over the years, a few or no people would cut grass along the road. But this year, more and more people have taken their grass knives. Is the process worth a try? As we look to a problem of drought that we are having, I thought of just cutting grass so that I would help out our system farmers like me and the rest take home. We started now, I think we cut about 12 kilos. This is the 12th kilo we are at now. 
we we sleep next to the road uh, with these four men I work with. They are the ones assisting me with the work today. Mm -hmm. So I, I give them after two weeks the food I supply. So the, the, the small money they get here, they take, they take back home. The grass we're cutting here belongs to a German man called Aring, is where I asked permission from. I met with the roads authority and then they said I should meet up with Aring and then Aring permitted me. And as I hear as, as we are here now this morning I met up with this with the next farmer who's Corpus van der Meve. And then he said thank you very much for asking for asking for permission because as usual he sees people in the middle of the night stealing grass from his area. So road so Corpus van der Merve is the one that has to inform all roads authority that he is permitted to cavari to cut grass in his area. With their eyes constantly on the sky and high hopes for good showers this year, communities are earnestly pleading to the government to lease out unoccupied farms until the situation changes. <laughs>